So today I want to talk about Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Why? Because it's bloody awesome, that's why. And it's probably a game that some of you have probably never ever heard of. I myself had never heard of this game until fellow YouTuber Metal Jesus Rocks covered it as part of his Hidden Gems video series for the Xbox 360. So let's start off the video with a big shout out to the tall hairy one himself. Hi, thank you. So anyway, in Kingdoms of Amalur, Reckoning, you are an adventurer, and then you get killed. Well, we're off to a flying start, aren't we? But then you're resurrected by some sort of arcane process, and you're off with renewed vigour to kick more buttock across the kingdom of Amalur. However, you have no memory of your previous life. And as a result of your return from the dead, you now have the inexplicable ability to manipulate the very fabrics of destiny itself. In short, you are no longer bound by fate, which is something that every other character across the kingdoms of Amalur is, is subjected to. Not only are you now in charge of your own fate, you can also change the fate of others around you, which certainly makes you a very interesting character. The game reminds me of the Fable and Dragon Age titles, with a bit of the God of War combat system thrown in for good measure. Not, not only in terms of combat, but also in the various different gory ways in which you can dispatch some of the bodies. The game also has a huge open world, similar to, to Skyrim, for you to knock about in. Uh, also similar to those games is how you'll start out with an even amount of skill in each ability, so you can easily tailor your playing style to the game without too much of a steep learning curve. It's entirely up to you whether you choose to be the stealthy rogue type with daggers and longbows, the powerhouse that lugs about broadswords and warhammers, or the wizardy one that likes to lob fireballs at his foes. But it's certainly easy enough to be a hybrid of all these different classes as you make your way through a huge map of increasingly different territories. Reckoning uses a similar combat system to the likes of Fable, Dragon Age, God of War, etc. in which your character can alternate between quick and slow attacks, magic and skillful dodging, which all flows together very smoothly. There is a variety of weapons and abilities. It's fast paced and is very polished even more so than what we've come to expect from RPG titles. Reckoning mode is a sight to behold as well, where you'll enter into a higher powered state where you can wreck huge damage on your foes, boosting your XP before finishing them off in a grisly, gory fashion. They are different finishing moves with different weapons and on different foes, so there's some variety on seeing the different ways in which you dispatch the bodies. The art style to this game is beautiful, really colourful and detailed, with a lot of variety in the environments, as you make your way across lots of different cities, towns, plains, deserts, forests, and lots of other places to explore. Big Huge Games certainly lives up to their name, as the size of the world amount for Reckoning is indeed big, and, um, huge. Those looking for a game to fill up many hours of their time will find much to enjoy here. The quality of the artwork extends to the characters as well, including a wide selection of unpleasant nasties influenced by European folklore. The character design has got lead artist Todd McFarlane's fingerprints all over them, and there's a brilliantly grandose and creepy look to the proceedings, just like McFarlane had with his work on Spider-Man, as well as on his own creation, Spawn. Of course, there is a main questline to go through, but no doubt you'll find yourself getting distracted by the hundreds of side quests that can be picked up from every Tom, Dick and Harry wandering around, who have seemingly mastered the ability to walk and talk, but apparently have not got the common sense to realise that going mushroom picking in the deep dark woods of Danger Mafia probably isn't such a good idea. But the problem is the fact that you've probably already got a lot of games like this already. Again, I refer to the aforementioned Fable and Dragon Age games. And of course, it doesn't help when you take a look at the date that this game was released. February 2012. 
What's wrong with that date? Well, it really came at a wrong time, as most of us had already picked up the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim a few months previously on 11 11 11. And we were quite happy with that to get our fantasy fill. Reckoning does have the same gameplay features as those other games that I've mentioned, and in the case of the Fables and the Dragon Ages, it actually does some of these features a lot better. And although both Reckoning and Skyrim have a lot to offer, and I've certainly sunk many hours of playing into both games, Kingdoms of Amalur just can't hold a candle to the almighty Skyrim, which is something that has affected other open-world fantasy games since its release, so it's certainly not alone in this regard. Upon release, Reckoning met a decent reception from critics, almost all of whom praised the game's ambitious design, regardless of what they thought of the execution. And it sold over a million copies during its first week of release. Sounds good, right? Not really, because the game had gone so over budget, it actually needed to sell three million copies just to break even. And unfortunately, in late May 2012, 38 Studios dissolved in the midst of catastrophic financial shenanigans and a barrage of accusations. However, judge the game on its own merits and you'll find yourself an unexpected little gem here. It really is a well-made game that you need to check out at some point if you like your RPGs, and it is quite cheap to get hold of now. In the words of the Metal Jesus, it's definitely a total hidden gem. And as a result, Kingdoms of Amulet Reckoning gets a thumbs up from the Big Daddy D.